Hey all, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to my Vintage Pinup Collection video. Everything we're going to be looking at today ranges from the 1940s through the 1950s. I've got a wide variety of different things, from matchbooks, to ashtrays, to magazines, to calendars. There's so many cool things that I have in my collection, and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you all. But before we look at the different items, I want to share a book with you all. It's called Va Va Voom, and it really gives you a basic idea of what pinup is and shows you the different eras of, you know, what was risque in 1918 versus the 50s, or even going as late as in the 1970s with Farrah Fawcett's most iconic image of her in a red bathing suit. So this came out in 2008, and it's a really good book. I highly recommend it if you're interested in reading about pinups history and all that good stuff. And the reason that I like pinups so much is just because it really, you know, maybe it's kind of a guy thing because pinup is mainly gearing towards a male audience. But I really like that everything you see, especially like here on Jane, for example, like everything you see on her is, is real. Like her figure is fantastic. Her bosoms and her butt are real. Like, it's not all plastic like it is nowadays in Hollywood. And it also really gives you a glimpse into, like, what was considered risque back in the day. Like, everything that she's wearing, like that zebra-striped bikini in the 50s, that was pretty controversial and risque for that time period. Whereas now, that's considered timeless and classy. But back then, it was very, very naughty. So let's go ahead and check out all of the cool stuff that I have. I do want to warn you that some of the stuff is going to be nude, because pinup is not just skimpy outfits, it's nudity too. So I'll probably share that later in the video, but let's go ahead and check out some of the other risque stuff first. So this is a really, really fun image of a lady bowling. And the only thing that's really revealing about this is the fact that you can see her pantyhose and her dress is pulled up just a little bit. Now, pinup is on a lot of different things. Matchbooks and notepads and pamphlets and playing cards, magazines. I mean, I'm sure you name it, there's pinup on it somewhere. So there were a lot of fun images on matchbooks. Now, this is only one of the many that I have. Granted, if we looked at every piece of pinup that I have in my collection, it would take forever to get through. So I just picked some of my favorites out of the many pieces that I have. So that way it's not an entirely long video. So this is the matchbook that I had within close proximity of me that had the best image on it. So this is one thing that they put pinup on. They also added pinup to these really cool calendar notepads. Now these are very, very desirable because they are images of Marilyn Monroe. We've got Marilyn right here on the very far right, dressed as a farmer, which I think is significant for her very small role in the movie Scudda Who, Scudda Hay. And then we've got her dressed and posing near a bus stop sign, which is significant for her movie Bus Stop that she did with Don Murray. And then we've got just this one where she looks like she's splashing in a pool of some sort, or like a lake. All done by Earl Moran. He was a very famous pinup artist, as many other men were. You had um, Elf Green, you had Earl Moran, you had Albert Alberto Vargas, you had so many other iconic pinup artists out there. So these were just smaller. They also made larger versions too, and these ones are in slightly better condition. I really like the image of this girl here, and she is holding a balloon getting ready to be inflated, and then it looks like one slipped under and exposed her pantyhose. This girl is 
Uh, this one's by Elf Green, and I think this one was also by Elf Green, the balloon girl. She's sliding down the banister on the stairs and says, Look out below! And she's wearing a very sheer nightgown of some sort. Now this one I posted a picture of to Instagram, and for whatever reason it just blew up. Like, it got a lot of hearts. I think it was like 488, which is a record for me. It's a, again, it's a very sexy, sheer outfit. You can see most of her legs. Thankfully, you can't see her lady bits, but it's still a really cute image. And this is also Elfgren. Actually, I think most of these... Oh, no, this is Earl Moran. I love the image of this girl. She's just sitting there thinking, and her top is very um, revealing. You can see a lot of her cleavage and her breasts. Lots of leg, which was very highly controversial for that time period. Now, this is a different artist. This is Freeman Elliott. We will take a look at his calendar for 1950 that I have a little bit later in this video. But this is a really awesome image of a pinup girl riding a firecracker. And the last one is of a woman, it looks like her dress was inflated, and you can see a lot of her legs, and you can see the uh, lingerie that she's wearing. Again, it's very classy stuff, you know, judging by what you see nowadays. It's just not as explicit as it was 70, 80 years ago. Then there's something called flip tees, which these are from around circa 1940. Basically what it is, you open this up, and there will be an image of a woman here, and this is from Winnie's Little Club in Miami Beach. Shiver, shake, quiver, quake, in a number like a Roomba, close the encumber. So basically what you do is you raise these celluloid sheets right here, and every time you raise it, the image gets more saucy. Like here she is in her lingerie, and. It gets more revealing, like, look, there she is, in just pure lingerie, and then you pull up all the celluloid sheets, and you have basically a completely nude woman, either, even though she's still wearing the leggings. So these were given to me by one of my uh, former co-workers. Her father-in-law had these, and she knew that I liked pinup, and she was kind enough to give them to me. So we got this one. And then we've got this one here. Again, same concept. Just lift up the celluloid and the outfit gets more and more revealing. Until you have a completely nude woman. Now these retail, f I mean, depending on the subject matter, some retail for more than others, but these are worth about eight, nine dollars a piece. Still a very, you know, affordable piece of pinup if you you don't want to spend a lot. And here's the last flip tease that I have. This one is of a lady who is... Looks like she's trying to blow out a candle here. So these are very, very fun. So the one piece of pinup that I have a lot of in my collection are the arcade cards. And the history behind these pieces are if you were to go to like Coney Island or the boardwalks on New Jersey or anything like that in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, there would be a machine there. And it was, the reason they call them penny arcade cards is because you'd put a penny into the machine and you would receive one of these many different cards that you could get. Now, depending on who's on it and the rarity of these cards, they can go for quite a bit of money. Now, the most I've ever spent on one of these cards is about $10.50, and that's on many of the ones that I have just because they don't pop up very often. One of them is in this stack that I'm going to show you all, and we'll look at it in just a minute. But this one's of Tempest Storm, and this is... In today's standards, comparatively minor, because there's not, I mean, she's just in a really, like, sexy bodysuit. 
Now this one is a little bit more revealing, as you can see, because she's in a very sheer outfit and she has pasties covering her nipples and a flower bouquet covering up her lady bits. So I remember uh, we used to go to this flea market out in Pasadena, Maryland, which is out in kind of like the, what is it, the suburbs of Baltimore or kind of like a subdivision of Baltimore. And I remember picking these up and showing them to my dad once, and this was back when I was probably, we were living in my grandmother's house at the time, so it was a, around the time I was probably in my mid to late teens, so maybe 16, 17, and my dad's like, don't show your mother these, because, you know, at the time I was still not really of age to be, I shouldn't own any of that stuff at that time, but I did. I had them for a long time, and I think I ended up replacing them because someone had offered them on eBay for a really good price. So they get just as bad as revealing as this or a complete nude image. And even celebrities, they made celebrity cards. This is of Betty Grable. I love this bathing suit she's in. This is probably late 30s into the 40s, just judging by the image of her and her hairstyle, the bathing suit. It's very, very classy. Now we're going to get into more of the cartoony type uh, pinup images. This one's called Up in the Air. I really like the, um, the different colored balloons that are in this image. I would definitely say this would look great in a Halloween display or maybe even like if you were doing a birthday party or something like that. Like if you wanted to scan this image and put it on your birthday invitations, I would highly recommend doing so. This is probably from about 1940, I think, according to what I've seen on eBay. Now, this is one that I did end up paying up for. I think it was like 10 bucks. But granted, it's a very desirable card because of the bright colors and just, it's awesome. I absolutely love it. Now, this one is one you do not see pop up on the market very often. So again, it was another one that I paid about $10.50 for. This is called Glovely. And she almost reminds me of a saloon girl, like, you know, the, the waitresses you see in the saloon serving beer and drinks. She's very cute, and I love her. Again, another very fun image. It's called Station Wow. I can see Katie from Vintage and Vinyl buying one of these and putting it with her record display. Because it is a very cute image. I mean, you know, she's showing off a lot more leg than she should if this was the 40s. But it's still a very classy image. And this one I actually sent to Nate when we did um, a friend mailbox for him for just being so supportive of all of us. And, you know, with him being in New Zealand, he can't really buy anything from us in the U.S. because it's so darn expensive to get him stuff or get stuff to him. So I thought as a little gift from me, I would send him one of these fun little images. And again, you know, my room is nautical themed. So I thought that this would be a fun one to add to my collection. And it's entitled, Who Said Anchors Away? She's topless and basically the anchor is covering her breasts along with her crossed arms. Can't imagine how warm that that anchor must be. It's probably pretty cold. So yes, arcade cards are the item of pinup that I have the most of in my collection. Another fun thing that I enjoy collecting are pinup playing cards. Now I don't actually use them, I just like to collect them because of the different images. Typically, I end up spending about $15 to $20 for a deck of cards, which is actually a very good price, especially for an antique store. Now, this deck right here is a two-pack by Esquire. It's from about 1945, and online, they actually do sell for a lot more if you have complete decks. So, I highly recommend if you're looking for stuff to resell and pinup is something you come across and it's a relatively good price, pick it up. Because it is collectible. People do love the playing cards. Whether they just collect them like I do or they use them is a different story. Now let's say I have two decks 
of the same card. Now I do have that. When I was at Antique Marketplace of Le Moyne and I found a pack of two, the same, not the, of the same image, but of uh, another pack that I got for a dollar at the flea market, I decided to go ahead and use the playing cards that I have that were, you know, out of the box and everything. And those are going to be my deck that I use to play with. So, yeah, I don't mind that at all because I have a set in the box and set that's out of the box that was actually a part of a pack of two, but I only found the one. So this set I actually bought for about $19.95. It was at the same antique mall that's local here for a while, and I thought someone had bought them until I saw them in the uh, showcase. They had just moved them. So I went ahead and bought them. This girl kind of reminds me of Ginger Rogers a little bit, even though I don't think Ginger Rogers ever posed this way for anybody. And then we've got these ones. Now these, if you all remember, a while back, I did pay about $40 for a pack of the pink Vargas playing cards. And thankfully, I was able to make my money back exactly because I was able to get basically both of these packs for about the same price that I bought just the one for. So you all know my favorite color is blue, and then I had to have the pink ones too. I've contemplated at one point selling the pink ones and keeping the blue, but I, I don't know. Something just tells me not to do it. But who knows, maybe one day if I really need the money, I will sell one of them. So let me go ahead and I will open these up and we will take a look at a couple of the cool ones. Okay, so I don't want to share the same deck of cards twice, and the images are the exact same, so I just picked out a few that are really, really fun, and I thought you might like to see them. So this one is the Joker. And by the way, if I didn't say that already, um, these are Vargas playing cards. She would look great in a Halloween vignette, I think. Put her in a flower frog and just display her with a bunch of other Halloween stuff. She's dressed as a gesture. Not gesture. Jester. She's got the jester outfit, she's got the jester wand, or stick, baton, whatever you want to call it. She would look fantastic, and she is the Seven of Hearts. She would look great in a Valentine's Day display, I think. And then we've got Robin Hood, or she's dressed as Robin Hood, with her arrows. The witch, riding her broomstick. How awesome is that? Again, great for Halloween display. And then we've got this lady, and it looks like she's holding the phone. Maybe she's like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. Goodbye. And then we've got this girl. She that That's Pamela in her past life, side-eyeing me, like, you know you're not supposed to be owning these cards. Or it could be my mom, too. She's giving that side eye. And we've got this girl here. Very cutesy. And again, like I said, this stuff is just art to me. And I love it so much. So the last deck of playing cards we're going to be looking at are Darling playing cards. I got these at the same antique mall that I picked up the two-pack of Esquire, but a few years earlier. Probably around the time we first moved up here. And paid $9.95 for them. They go for a whole lot more, of course. I will take out a few of them, and we will look at them. I think you all are admiring this beautiful gal, the Joker. I think she is super, super cute. So this is the Joker you guys just took a look at. That looks like Marilyn almost. I love her. Can you imagine her in a summer display? I love that outfit, or that bikini I should say. Very controversial for the 40s. She's cute, I like her hair. I have a, a lighter with this girl on it. Good for spring. She kind of
kind of looks like um, Joan Collins a little bit, don't you think? She's got, to me, she has the Betty Page jet black hair. Good summer card. Again, great for spring display. That reminds me of Jackie Kennedy. I, again, I just, I love these cards. They're so much fun. So ashtrays are another item you might find with pinup on it. Of course they were used, so sometimes they're not gonna be in the best shape. Now this one right in front of me would look great with Halloween. It's for the Playboy Club. Uh, I think this is probably from the late 50s into the 1960s. They're very common, they're not worth a lot of money. I think I paid $5 for this one. So, I mean, pay what you wanna pay for something because that's really what determines the value. It's all in what someone's willing to pay. If you're willing to pay a little bit more for this because you just can't find it and you really want it, perfect. If you don't wanna pay up and you wanna wait and see if you can find it cheaper like I did, that's fine too. So this one's basically just a woman wearing stockings with nothing else and gloves with the Playboy key. Now we've got some metal ones here too and my dad actually found me this one. Palace Cafe. As you can see there is some marks on here from cigarette ashes but it's still a very fun piece. They're stuck together, sorry guys. This one I actually got at a vendor mall, and I only paid, I think, it was $2.95, and I think it was 10% off, so it was only, like, $2.66, which is perfectly fine, because as you can see, there is some damage here. Image itself is still visible, so I was perfectly fine paying, like, less than $3 for this. Now, this one, I think I paid about $8 and change for at a different antique mall but I still think it's a fun piece. And again, if you're willing to pay up for something that you haven't seen before, which I do all the time, and you really like it, but it's, it's not like too, too expensive, I say go for it. And these are one of those things where you see them really expensive elsewhere, and then you see them somewhere else, and they're a little bit more affordable, and it's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll pay, like, let's say you see them for, like, $30 at one antique store for just one of these, and then you see them maybe for half that, or maybe just a little bit less, like, even $12. I would pay $12 for one of these, because even on eBay, you have to pay shipping. So, I, it's all in a matter of what you like and what you're willing to spend. Now, depending on the rarity of something, or just something you don't see out there and it's a really good price, or you may pay up for it just a little bit, it's worth it because you don't have to pay shipping on it, so you don't have to wait for it to come to you in the mail. And yeah. And there's, again, there's so much pin about there for everyone. It's, it's, it's so much fun to collect. And not everyone likes the same stuff, so... My pinup collection might be different from yours or from Bob and Dylan and, you know, nobody's going to have the same exact thing. So now we're going to start looking at some of the magazines. Now, there are many of them that I have, and if, like I said before, if I shared everything, this would be probably a three-hour video. So, these are two magazines that I had framed. I went to Walmart and got one of those, like, frames where the glass pops out. They're really inexpensive, like five bucks. So, these are from 1954, being this one right here, and the one with Jane Mansfield on it is from 1956. You all know my bedroom is beach-themed. I thought Jane being in the bikini was perfect for this room. Now, this one over here with Dolores Donlin on the front cover was actually featured in the 1993 movie Dennis the Menace, which was by Warner Brothers, I believe. And in the scene, it's basically the next day, and Dennis is up in the attic with Mr. Wilson. He's, he is looking for the garden lanterns for this big flower 
um, I guess it's kind of like a flower party kind of a thing. If you've never seen the movie, basically George Wilson grew this flower for 40 years. And for whatever reason, they figured out that on whatever date it was, it was going to bloom. So they were a part of this garden society. So they have this party and they watch the flower glow by the moonlight. Anyway, let me backtrack to the scene where this is featured. So they're up in the attic looking for the garden lanterns for the party. And the song What You Know Joe by Joe Stafford is playing, on one of my many favorites from that movie. And, of course, Mr. Wilson's looking around, not really paying attention to what Dennis is doing. So Dennis stumbles upon this exact magazine and goes, Holy smokes, you gotta be brave to ride a cow in your underpants. And, of course, Mr. Wilson goes, Put that away! That's not for kids! But, I mean, for 1954, I'm sure this was deemed a softcore pornographic magazine because look how she's dressed. You can see basically her cleavage, her chest is exposed, and she's wearing fishnet stockings, which is very, very risque for the time. Nowadays, you see girls wearing that around, and it's completely normal. But it's a very classy magazine. Now, I'm sure e this was even shocking for women of the Edwardian era where, you know, everything was covered and you didn't see a lick of flesh at all. And then we've got Jane over here, 1956. The bikini she's wearing, you know, it was a bikini and that was still controversial for the day, but, you know, nowadays a bikini is basically just a bathing suit that any woman would wear. I think I spent, this one I know I spent $25 on. This one I cannot remember. It was it was relatively cheap. It was probably like 10, 15 bucks. I don't mind paying that. There's one more that I would love to have and has Betty Page on the front of it, but that one is a very, very desirable issue. Oh yeah, so this is June of 56. I don't know what this one is from. I know it's from, I think it's something, it's from 1954, I know that. But I love these. The front covers are fantastic. The graphics, especially on this one with the keyhole, so, so cool. So now we're going to be looking at the smaller magazines. I hope you all enjoyed looking at the front covers of those Peep Show magazines. I think the graphics on them are fantastic. So... They came out with a lot of different, like, pocket magazines that, you know, guys could just carry around with them in their briefcase or whatever. Uh, this is from August of 1957 with Anita Egberg on it. Uh, we have another Tempo magazine. This has Betty Brossomer on it, who has the, probably one of the most amazing hourglass figures I've ever seen. Here's a Slick magazine. Uh, we've got She with Mamie Van Doren on the front of it. People Magazine from 1954. Again, these are just some of the many that I have. I just wanted to show you all the different kind of covers that you may come across and the different kind of magazines you may come across in your travels. We've got Show Magazine. And then this is probably my most inexpensive one that I picked up. This is from, I think, 1950. Oh, this is from February 1955. Uh, Liberace's Sexiest Girlfriend. Not sure that Liberace ever had girlfriends unless they were, like, you know, girls that were his best friends. Now, this was back in the day, you know, when being gay in Hollywood was not very acceptable at all. But, you know, they tried to cover it up saying, you know, or they'd hook a, a gay man up with a woman and give the media and everybody else the idea that, oh, he's dating a woman. Oh, he's really not gay. And I can't remember who this girl is. I think it's said on the front cover. Uh, Dolores, I think it was Dolores something can't remember but yeah this was 50 cents and I was happy to take it off this guy's hand he had a bunch of ephemera stuff I wasn't really interested in and this was at the very bottom of the bin so I had to have that so these are very very fun to look through
Before we dive into the vintage pinup calendars, I thought you all might like to take a look at this really awesome image. This is called Honeymoon, and it's from 1939. It's basically an image of an Art Deco nude lady, and she's sitting on the moon. Nude, of course. What I really like about her, I really like her jet black hair, and she's definitely got an Art Deco face to her. I remember seeing this image all framed up at Emmitsburg Antique Mall years ago, and they wanted like $95 for it, and I, and I was not about to fess up for it. While this may have been cut from a calendar, it was only five bucks, and I jumped on it at five dollars because I love the image so much. It's so, it's just very, very well done and very, very classy. And it's cute. I mean, look at that. I mean, I know a lot of people are very sensitive to nudity and everything, but this is just an amazing image. I will go ahead and before we jump, or uh, jump into the calendars, I'll show you all a scanned copy of this because I think this is just fantastic and I don't think the camera on my phone is doing it justice. I bought this from Pamela Blanchard. By the way, we're diving into the calendars. And this is a really cool piece. This is from Joe's R. Klein Company, Plumbing and Heating. It's from 1948. And let's read it first. It says, A diller a dollar, this ten o'clock scholar is right at the head of her class. After one little kiss from this sprightly miss, the professor said weakly, You'll pass. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty naughty. I like the image of the girl, I love the dress she's wearing and the outfit. But what's really cool about this is it's a pop-out. So if you wanted to display it on your desk or whatever, you could. Just like this. To me, this is almost... Like, I feel like this is Katie from Vintage and Vinyl almost when she's reading that saucy book. Because when she does those videos, she doesn't know what to, you know, what to expect, as do we. We don't know either, so it's almost like she reads it to us, and she doesn't have any idea as to what's going on. So I can imagine this being her, being like, oh my gosh, that's pretty bad. Now we're jumping into the pinup calendar section of this video. We're going to be looking at two of the original Playboy calendars. One is from 1958, of course, the very first calendar that they made, and one from 1959. This is the first issue, and we're looking at January here. I'm not going to flip through each of them because that would be very time consuming, but what I did do is I scanned in either three or four of the fam more famous models, and uh, Dolores Donlin, Jane Mansfield, and Janet Pilgrim. You will see them. I just cannot remember who's in which calendar, but this is the very first one. And this one is from 1959. This is January of 59. And this one actually came with the original sleeve. So let's go ahead and check out the other cool calendars. The next calendar we're going to be looking at is the Freeman Elliott Artist Sketch Pad calendar entitled 12 Sweet Dishes. One of my many favorite calendars that I own happens to be this one right here because it's very holiday themed. And you all will see what I mean in just a second.
And the next calendar we're going to be looking at is from 1952, and it's by Gillette Elvgren. You can already see the front cover. Um, this is for January. Very, very cute, very, very sexy, very, very saucy. So let's go ahead and check out the different months, shall we? One thing I did forget to mention to you all is that sometimes you will see a later calendar via this one, 1961, with an older image on it. So this calendar came out in 1952, and this one came out in 1961. This one is older and is with other pinup images. Sometimes what they would do is they would just take a single litho image and they would stick it on to this calendar advertising a grocery store. You will see that with many of the different calendars out there. With that being said, because this one is older and is with other pinup images, it will definitely command more money. This one right here will still fetch some pretty decent money too, because it has that image, but it is much later. So just keep that in mind. It's still original. And they do make pinup to this day, which, of course, is not nearly as valuable as something like this one right here. But I just thought I'd run that by you, because it is something to be on the lookout for. Like, you want to look for the pinup that came out in the 40s and 50s, like on this one, for example. This one, while it still does have some value, you definitely want to look out for these ones that have multiple images of girls on them. Because while this one does have some value, it's much later than this one. So I thought I would just run that by you. But she's still a very sexy lady. Now, isn't she? So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and when I showed you all that image from 1939, there is going to be nudity in this video. And pinup is not all about women in lingerie and in sexy attire. It's also nudity. And yes, I am showing you a picture of Margie Harrison, who was Playboy's Sweetheart of the Month for January 1954. Nude. Now, I'm sure maybe some of you all are thinking, oh my gosh, that's a naked woman. Her breasts are exposed. She has no clothes on. That's risque. That's inappropriate. That's sexual. In my opinion, it is and it's not. If you are an international viewer who enjoys American pinup, here in America we do kind of have this negative association of nudity with sex. So you see a woman's breasts, you see her butt, you see a man's manhood, you see a woman's womanhood, and it's automatically deemed a sexual thing. Well. In my opinion, a completely naked body is a lot more pure and it's a lot less offensive than what you see some people wearing, especially if they shouldn't be wearing it. So an image like this, to me, is just, it's a naked body. I mean, we were all born naked, weren't we? And we, we all are naked when we take showers, when we bathe, when we change our clothes. There's nothing offensive about it, at least not to me. Now, granted, I can understand why somebody might find this an offensive image. But, in my opinion, I think that this says a whole lot less about someone being naked rather than some kind of clothing that she wears. 
And overall, I think it's a really, really nice image. And this is the nude image of Marilyn Monroe on the red velvet. And there's a very interesting story behind these images. So it's 1949, and Marilyn Monroe is a young 23-year-old. I think that was even before she was Marilyn. And she ran into photographer Tom Kelly, and she needed to get to the film studio because I guess she had either an audition or she just had to work that day on the set. She didn't have the money to get there. So Tom kindly gave her the money for a taxi to get to the studio. And he had asked her, I think a few times, to pose nude, and she politely refused. Remembering that he helped her get to work that day, she did reward him, I guess you could say, and did agree to pose naked with his wife present, which I think was a very smart move. And I'm sure it made her feel more comfortable posing nude with his wife Natalie being present. So this was basically her doing him a favor for helping her get to work that day. There are many other poses out there, but this is the most iconic. This is also the image that is featured in the December 1953 Playboy magazine, which is the very first issue. I would love to get my hands on it. Unfortunately, that magazine is worth a lot of money. And I mean, I don't want a mint crisp graded copy because you pay more for the grading than you do the magazine. But I'm very happy to own this because this is just a basic salesman sample calendar and I didn't pay hardly anything for it. So I love it and I will cherish it forever. I hope you all enjoyed seeing some of the pieces I have in my collection. But before I conclude, I thought it'd be necessary to talk about the controversy surrounding pinup and images we see in the media today. So all of the images I shared with you all of women from the 30s, 40s, and 50s are very pretty, tiny, have big breasts, very petite figure, a big butt. If you are into the beefcake, male pinup, he is very handsome. He has pectorals, he's very toned and athletic, he's got a six pack, he's got a big package if they took a picture of it. And unfortunately, those images are all based on fantasy, they are not a reality whatsoever. So when you go into the world of dating, make sure that you are not looking for your fantasy man or your fantasy woman because it's just not gonna happen. Nobody's perfect, no matter what. Even those pinup models, they aren't perfect either. And also, some people do claim that these images are body shaming. And, like I mentioned before, do portray inaccurate images of what a man should look like or what a woman should look like. So just keep in mind that you need to separate your fantasy from the reality. But I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section below what was your favorite item or favorite items I shared. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are posted. The link to my social media accounts via Instagram are down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you all soon. Take care, bye guys.